Oh, yes. Hi. Welcome to 101 Mistakes That Humans Make to Mess Up Their Dogs. My dog is very tired. She has a big um, Mastiff pit bull guy staying here that she has been flirting and playing with for now almost two weeks, and she can hardly keep her eyes open. She's very tired, so she's just going to be here sleeping. I'm just holding her up so she can be in the picture for a second. So today we're going to talk about um, something that's very, very important, and it actually is something we don't really think about with our dogs, and it's one of the biggest mistakes in all of dog training is a lack of bond, proper bond, and engagement. They're really two different things. I could do a whole um, podcast or, you know, a whole video on bond, and I could do a whole video on engagement, but they're also linked. So I'm going to kind of give you the bird's eye view of why proper bond and engagement is so, so very important. So first of all, your dog is going to be bonded to you no matter what. So, you know, just by living with your dog and feeding him and all of that stuff, you're, you're going to bond. I mean, I love you. You love me. But you want a, a, a proper bond. You really want the bond of um, mutual understanding, connection, communication. All that has to be taught, right? So that, that plays into your bond, uh, all of your training. But before we ever train, we need to make sure we understand engagement. And engagement is anything, right? If I'm interacting with anybody, is that engagement? Well, I suppose it is. I could be engaging in something, you know, a, a fight. I could be engaging in something wonderful. So what is proper engagement? What does a dog think is fun and wonderful? engagement. And this is a very different thing than what you would think. So most people think, oh, you know, he should listen. And if I say sit, he should sit. If I say come, he should come. But the mistake you're making is you're not engaged with your dog. And what that means is a dog who is engaged with its human is a dog that when you walk outside the door and there's all these distractions, squirrels, birds, other dogs, that your dog does not actually want to look at those things. And it has nothing to do with dog training. It's engagement. When you walk outside the door with your dog, does he run towards the fence and go check out? Sorry, my shirt's bugging me. Does he go run to the fence and check out the birds and the squirrels and go, gosh, dude, I've been with you all day. I'm going to run over here and see who's at the gate and see if I can see another dog. Does your dog move away from you and go search the environment? Or do you walk out the door and your dog is looking up at you jumping on you in a good way and saying, let's play, let's play, let's play, looking to you for its engagement. So to me, all of my dogs, it's a natural thing for me, so I don't think about it. When I walk out the door, all my dogs turn and stare at me like, what are we doing? Are we going on a hike? Are, we, are you going to throw the ball? Are we doing some training? That's what I want from all of my dogs. And because I'm a dog trainer, I create that naturally. But a lot of people don't. and Proper engagement starts, okay, so the mistake people make is a lack of proper engagement and a lack of proper bond. And again, the bond's going to happen anyway. But the bond that I want includes that my dog wants to engage with me in one way, and it's play. So you have to figure out a way to play with your dog. It's not all about what you want. It's not all about, well, I need him to listen, and I need him to not jump, and I need him to come when I call. Yeah, but what does he need? He needs you to engage with him. And then you can use that engagement in the future as a reward. You can use a play session as, you know, to help you train recalls, to help you uh, uh, increase attention, increase drive, increase obedience. All that stuff happens because you created a dog who wants to engage with you more than he wants to engage with the environment. The environment includes all things except you, okay? The environment is outside squirrels, bugs, birds, bees, other dogs, noises, whatever. Engagement involves you, you and your dog.
engagement. And the way I create engagement with my dogs is to play. Play, what is play? Let's talk about what dogs like. What are some things dogs like to do? Crickets, if it's crickets for you, then you need to figure that out. And most dogs, I would say 99% of all dogs, even chihuahuas, even lap dogs, they like to, if you can't fill in those blanks, you definitely need to be watching. 99% of dogs like to chase. 99% of dogs like to tug, play tug, bite on something and tug it and shake it, okay? So let's just start with those two things. I want you to practice running and moving away from your dog. And when he catches you, have something to tug. Even if you just run and move away and when he gets to you, give a treat. It's still fun. He's not just getting the treat. He's learning to move towards you and to chase you and to stay with you and engage with you. The reason your dog wants to chase squirrels and other dogs is they are running and they are moving away. So he wants to engage with them because of the movements, okay, and also possibly the sound. Dogs like to engage with things that go beep, 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 birds, squirrels, you know, they make squeaky noises. Other dogs, woof, 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 they're barking. All those noises trigger your dog to engage. So when you're moving away from your dog and you have your tug toy, and um, there should be a tutorial on the two toy tug game. If there's not, I'm going to put one up there, but uh, it's really important to play tug correctly. And that's not what this post is about. It's about understanding first what we need to do. And then you can go watch the video on how do I create tug? How do I move away from my dog correctly? Um, Cause that all that, there's a way to do it. That's going to increase this, what we call engagement um, and bond with you and your dog. Sorry. I had something in my throat. Um, anyway, these Bluetooth uh, headphones, I just figured out how to record with them. And it might be an interesting tip, but I'll just say you have to go through a third party editor. So I'm using Filmic and it's Filmic Pro. You go into Bluetooth, turn it on, and then you turn down the volume or you can hear your voice talking back at you as you're recording. So anyway, there is a way to use Bluetooth headphones to record a video. And it took me uh, a really long time to figure that out. So anyway, passing on the knowledge there, but you can also hear every little mouth noise that I make probably. So sorry about that. Uh, anyway, but um, good sound is important. So again, a good test to see is your dog engaged with you is to just simply walk outside with your dog. Does your dog look at you or does your dog immediately run off? Okay. Even if my dogs have to potty, they don't. They're, they're like, what are we going to do? And I say, okay, you know, go potty. And then they leave me and go potty. So it's such a specific thing. And when I go to help people with their dogs, the first thing I do is observe them. I, I They come out the front door with their dog on a leash. And I always tell them to meet me in the front yard, which is another good tip and mistake that we're going to cover later. Um, but um, you should always meet people out uh, in, in the front yard or take a little walk together and then enter the house together. It's not that your dog is aggressive or is going to protect the house, but to prevent that from starting, it's a good idea to meet people outside, take a couple treats, take a little walk, and then walk into the property together. A dog who has multiple people coming in, especially dogs who live in households with housekeepers, pool men, um, you know, lots of people working there, coming in and out all, all the time, the dog will start to defend his turf. And I'm sorry, every subject kind of bleeds into another subject, so I get on tangents quite a bit, but that's what these long YouTube Videos are for to get into specifics, specifics, specifics. You can look at these videos as um, kind of a video podcast, and I'm going to try to upload them as podcasts as well, but you can also just play the video and listen to it as a podcast through your speakers. You don't have to watch me. I'm sitting here. Hey, and sometimes you'll get to see the cute dog if she decides to come over here, but it's super important that you first do the test. And if you say, oh, I'm one of those people that I walk outside and my dog is looking at me. Um, then you've done a great job. Certain breeds are more naturally um, prone to pay attention to you. Uh, herding breeds, labs, retrievers, some of the English breeds, uh, shepherds, German shepherds, borders, collies, uh, Aussies, they're automatically more human focused. And then other breeds are more environment focused to begin with, like a sighthound or a Shiba Inu, a Husky, a Malamute. Um, a chow chow, 
chow chows can go both ways, actually. Sometimes they're really one person focused. But anyway, um, and my first dog was a chow chow. That's why I smile. I have a special place in my heart uh, for him, Eugene. Anyway, so do the test and then make a realization. Say, you know, and the reason your dog is probably not coming when called or none of the training exercises are working is you haven't established play. So some people are going to say, well, I can't really run and I can't really play tug. Then get a chuck it and play ball with your dog. Play ball with your dog on a long line. And the reason I say on a long line is that if your dog goes and gets the ball and then keeps running away from you, you can reverse that by simply moving away or having a second ball. And when your dog has the first ball, you squeak the second one. He comes running, you throw the second ball. And um, I am going to, I think I do have a video of the two toy tug game and also the two, the two ball fetch game. And you have to get out there and squeak your voice and move your body. Even if you walk away from your dog, you should always, always, when you're trying to create engagement, be moving away from your dog. Okay. The men that wear the giant bite sleeve and the bite suit, those dogs are want to chase him. They are usually moving away. Um, in latter stages of training, the dog just knows he wants to bite. So then the, the guy can come at him with the suit on. But in the beginning, man, when if you run, boy, that dog just wants to latch on. So you want to run or move away quickly. And then when your dog gets to you, you want to have something for him to bite. So um, I'm going to show you guys in another tutorial, proper toys. The reason I like these certain tug toys, if you're using the wrong toy, your dog cannot bite onto it. He cannot latch on. All dogs are different. Some dogs, they can tug with a rope toy, but most dogs, a rope toy is too hard. So there are jute toys, which are like burlap sack material. That's really great for almost every dog, but it is an advanced tug, do tug toy for dogs who already know how to tug. If you have a younger dog or a herding dog, they can be soft mouth. So you're going to want to use more of a fleecy sheepy toy or the purple puller rings that are designed, by the way, to be punctured and shredded over time. And the reason dogs love those rings is because they're proper tug toys. They can sink their teeth in. If you're trying to tug with like a Nyla bone or a Kong toy, I mean, yes, an advanced Malinois or a certain, you know, really high, high drive level dogs can tug a Kong on a rope, but most dogs, it's going to slip right out of their mouth because they don't have that kind of a bite. So um, again, engagement it's a little bit different than food. So we can use food to engage our dog, but um, I'm not talking about sit and down and stay. I'm talking about playing with your dog, moving around and playing. So showing him the cookie and running away and hiding and, and having him chase you. And when he finds you, give him the cookie. That's engagement. Um, all of my training, I've realized as a dog trainer, when I train a dog to sit, down, stay, come, heal, I use engagement. So I actually create engagement first by teaching my dog to tug or love toys or love balls, love these things. And you have to animate those items. So if you take a tug toy and you hang it in your dog's face, and you go here, here, get it. And you're, you're dangling this tug toy. That repels most dogs. You need to move and run away and drag the toy. And so what I realized about dog training is that I always use my engagement when I'm training. But people have these two different ideas. Okay, now we're doing obedience. Sit down, stay. No, sit is a chance to earn your toy and tug. So the dog learns his sit through engaging because the engagement is the reward. And when you can train that way, it's going to make your dog so much more astute, so much more attentive, so much more obedient. Um, if you only use food for training, it's still a very good thing. But it's not going to access that part of the brain that's predator, prey, chase, you know, I'm, I'm running after that squirrel, that just prey drive, that part of the brain that engages in prey drive, predator chasing prey is the same center of the brain that engages in play. So when you're playing tug, it's activating that part of the brain that's that ancient, ancient, you know, chase it, bite it, shake it and kill it and then you get to eat. So you really want to be able to use both those drives, the food drive and the toy drive, which are both forms of engagement. Um, but people forget a lot about the play. 
if you're one of those natural people that just started throwing a ball and your dog brings it back, that's fabulous. It's fabulous. And if you have that kind of a dog, you did something really right or you're just lucky. So either one, you're super lucky. If your dog doesn't chase balls and you don't know how to play, then I'm gonna urge you to go watch my two toy tug game tutorial, which I'm gonna put up here. And it's, it's really important. And if you're feeling tired or you're injured or you can't run for some reason or another, you don't wanna run, it's too hot, you have health restrictions, physical restrictions, then you can get a flirt pole F-L-I-R-T-P-O-L-E, a flirt pole, and they look like um, a stick, a big long stick, like a horse lunge whip almost, and then on the end of that is a, is a um, tassel, and you tie a tug toy to that, and you can just literally stand and sit in a chair or stand up, and you just wave this big stick with a long line on the end of it and then a toy on the end of that, and you can your dog will lunge himself like a horse, like your dog will be chasing. And that is a great way to play with your dog if you can't move. So there's really no excuse. I mean, if you have a dog, you can move a little bit because how do you walk it? How do you, you know, go outside? Put, if you can get up out of a chair and walk outside, then you can hold a flirt, a, a flirt pole and teach your dog to chase that and then start using that chase to teach him commands. You start using that tug and that flirt pole. You call him to come and then he gets a chance to chase the toy. So again, it's, I'm not going to dwell on how to play tug here. Uh, there's going to be, you know, many other videos on the two toy tug game, the two toy fetch game. Uh, you should always have two of whatever you're doing because when your dog has one, you always have another one. And the one you have is alive and it can fly again or tug again. So basically it's a great exercise where your dog, the two toy tug game and the two um, ball fetch game teaches your dog that what you have is always more exciting than what he has. And in the beginning, I start with two equal value toys. And so we'll, you know, be please, when you get done with this, check out the two toy tug video. If it's not there, I have so many channels. I have a TikTok channel. I have an Instagram channel. I have three Facebook pages. Um, I have a lot of videos in a lot of different places, but really this YouTube channel is to go into depth. It's because I can't go blah, 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 and be funny and talk about different things or not funny, but I can't ramble on, on TikTok. And when people want to learn how to do something, they don't really go to TikTok. <laughs> it's kind of a brainless uh, thing. But when people want to do something and learn how to do something, they usually Google it and they come to YouTube. So uh, I decided to put these videos on YouTube to be more accessible and in-depth training videos that go further than just a silly trick or a one minute tutorial, which can be helpful, but um, you might wanna check out for fun videos just to see my training, boom, 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 like all these things back to back. My TikTok is just Dina Zafiris, D-I-N-A-Z-A-P-H-I-R-I-S. Uh, my Instagram is the same, Dina Zafiris, so you can go see funny tricks. And my YouTube channel is also Dina Zafiris. So you can have all three, but um, go check out the 101 mistakes humans make to mess up their dogs. We're on mistake number I can't remember, I'm gonna say this is six, it might be seven, but I'm gonna go look. Uh, and so remember, it's not about what you want, it's about what your dog wants. Your dog wants engagement. So if, if the only thing he gets to engage with is a squirrel, then he is not going to listen to your sit, down, stay, come, or heal command. If you can provide engagement for your dog, and then obedience gives him access to that engagement, now you're talking training. So we have to know this intellectually first before we even physically go through the motions to play and all that because there's ways that work and there's ways that don't work. So before we even, um, sorry, I was tapping my, my screen there because it's uh, the lighting looks weird and it's really boring. I need a picture or something or a green screen. I'll do that next. But um, you know, you need to know it intellectually, okay. I'm gonna move away from my dog. I'm not gonna to move towards them. I'm gonna have something he can bite onto and I'm gonna practice running away and hiding and running away and moving away. And if your dog is still completely blowing you off, you need to start those games in the house. You need to start those games in a non-distracting environment. Create a crazy game of tug or hide and seek. Have somebody hold your dog back while you run away and go hide. When your dog finds you, you can madly play tug of war or you can throw a ball or you can have your flirt pole or you can have food. Start there until your dog starts to think you're a bit more interesting than you are now.
<laughs> and believe it or not, it's probably true that we can be a lot more interesting for our dogs. When you are interesting and your dog wants you more than he wants anything else, that's the kind of engagement I'm talking about. Saying sit and having a dog sit because he knows he'll get his butt kicked if he doesn't, that sucks. Who wants to live in that world? Do you know what I mean? I don't. I want motivation. Okay. And there's going to be another uh, podcast on motivation because, you know, motivation exists because there are drives and those drives, I'm hungry, so I'm motivated to find food, right? Or, you know, um, after thousands of years of evolution, I want to chase. I'm motivated to chase, right? So the, the, these motivations, these drives, we can use these things, these very primal things, hunger, chasing, um, toys, all of that kind of stuff. We can use this stuff to access the engagement we need to further our training. So I trained a little dog today named Peanut. And we want Peanut to be able to leave it. And uh, so we were playing tug and training leave it. So again, when you're training something like leave it, it's, it's kind of pointless to train leave it when there's nothing great going on. So when people use food on the ground to train leave it, I do that because it gives the dog one chance to kind of like understand the concept. But I mean, once the distraction is in place, they're not remembering a little food game on the ground. So that game very quickly becomes leave it in the face of small, low level distractions and eventually very high level distractions. So today with Peanut, Peanut graduated to being able to play a mean game of tug and he's this little tiny doodle, like 20 pounds, maybe 15. Man, can he tug. So he's tugging, 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 tugging. Um, sorry, Peanut's a girl, tugging, tugging, tugging. She's tugging, tugging, tugging. And then we would just say, leave it. And if she didn't leave it, we'd give a little pop. She had a prong collar on, give a little pop. And boy, she, she dropped a toy. And it, right when she dropped it, I said, okay, get it. And I let her get it again. It took her one time to figure out the game. She, can't, she couldn't wait to leave it because the leave it gave her access to the toy again, which relates back into the mistake of the philosophy of all dog training, which is a command, come command, sit, command, down, command, can never mean or should never mean the end of something. If you use your commands in that way, come to me and we're done playing. Come to me and you lost the squirrel. Sit and you don't get to play with the other dog. If you use your commands always to deter your dog from doing what they want to do, then your commands aren't going to work. So when we train a dog, we use the engagement of tug or food, the engagement, right? That if my dog sits, break, I release the dog. And we play tug. Why? Because he sat. The sit wasn't the end when I needed control and I needed him to stop playing. The sit gave him access to the play. If my dog sits, I release him and I give him access to chase the squirrel. And when you get good at this stuff, giving your dog access through obedience, it opens the door to access. And then my dog can go seek that reward. But it came through me giving him the access, right? So it's all like this little web that you weave. And I just want this podcast, I'm going to end it before 30 minutes. We're at 23 minutes. We're almost done. But I want you to think about, you know, it's really different to have a dog that sits because he knows he has to sit. And, and the dog that sits because he's like, boom, I'm sitting because I can't wait because I know as soon as I sit, something explosively magical happens. It can be a food jackpot. It can be a toy jackpot. And you're thinking, well, do I have to do that my whole life? You do it every couple of days. You jackpot. You do these engagement trainings. I engage with my dogs every minute of every day. I don't say a command to my dog unless I'm prepared to engage. Do you know what I mean? Because 99.9999999999% of the time, you should be training your dog with engagement. And less than 1% of the time, you're actually using your commands to get what you want. And there's the funniest video out there of this golden retriever. I don't know if it's old or new, but he's the winner. I think it was at Crufts. I'm not sure. 
but it was, he won the national utility dog champion. And that is not a dog that does laundry. That's a, a sport. Utility dog is the level of competitive obedience. It's the highest level, which I competed in with my first Aussie. Um, and so in utility dog training, it is like the strictest, you're in a ring, right? It's hugely distracting. There's people and you're indoors in a big arena and there's other rings going on and people are screaming and eating and, and the dog's off leash doing all these complicated tasks, an article retrieve, um, retrieve over jumps, healing on and off leash, um, drops on recall, hand signal exercises with no voice um, and heel patterns and whatnot. So this retriever wins and he's just perfect. I mean, he never takes his eyes off. Perfect. He walks by the judge. Everything. Soon as he got called for them to win and take their trophy, he was jumping. He's pulling the owner so hard. She couldn't even get out to get her trophy because he's pulling her. But that's the beauty of training. If she wanted to go immediately back into a heel, she could have. But he was also allowed to just be a dog. I mean, it was a perfect example of training. She wasn't going to use her commands, right, because she couldn't engage. So she just said, you know, screw it, basically. My dog's pulling on me, but I'm not giving them a command. So let's go get our trophy. And he's pulling her. Then the judge goes to hand her the trophy and the ribbon. And <laughs> the dog is jumping and knocking the judge down. It's hysterical. Meanwhile, this is the top number one national champion obedience dog in the nation, okay? And he's knocking people over. So what I wanna say is like, that's a smart trainer. She knows like, I'm accepting my reward. I can't focus on the dog. He's not on a command, let him be a dog. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't have it, you can't have a broken dog, meaning just no personality at all, never jumps because it kind of means you're a bad trainer in a lot of ways. And most trainers I know, and I really want you to hear this because it's a very important point. Most dog trainers, there's a saying, like, you know, the, the, the shoe cobbler's child has no shoes. Well, most dog trainers' dogs jump. <laughs> they jump up. They jump into my arms. They jump. My dogs are always jumping. Um, if, I, if I walk in the house and I don't want them to jump, I give a command. I say, leave it, stay, down. And down, by the way, is not a discipline. It means to lie down, or I'll say sit, or I'll say go to your place, or I'll say no dogs. There are a zillion things I can say to get him not to jump. But usually when I come to the door, I kind of want to engage with my dog. No problem. But if I wanted to say stop jumping, I could. So the problem is to just expect that your dog should just be a non-jumper all the time. And you haven't perfected your obedience through the forms of engagement. But if you do look at all the top level trainers, their dogs, um, people always say dog trainers have the worst dogs. It's kind of true and kind of not. And, and the only part that's kind of true is most of those dogs do jump and um, bark because we train high drive stuff, you know, like what, you know, for all the best agility dogs, they're barking their heads off. I mean, they're running agility. Like it takes years to train at that level with the weave poles and the jumps and the tunnels and the shoots and the, you know, the, the teeter and the, the, the A-frame and the, the catwalk. I mean, it is the contacts. There are so it's such an intricate sport and you're talking about a dog with such focused attention that they're working away from, they never even look at the handler i mean they can see them out of your their periphery but they're doing a task it is such an amazing form of training but they're barking their heads off and at the end of that agility course what are they doing they're tugging their tug leash they're tugging it they're tugging it it, it is in no way related to obedience you know when you look at schutzend when you look at uh mondio ring all these sports are done by creating a high level of engagement. But when people watch the sport, they think obedience, they must, you know, have done that. They're so strict and they must have really taught sit and taught the dog how to bite the sleep. No, it's all engagement and it's all play. So, um, you know, aside from the, the, the military working dogs who really are trained to attack people without bite suits on, uh, I'm talking about even, even as far as bite sleeve and bite suit, that dog is playing. Okay. Until you get to a level where you're in, in the military working dog uh, world where they have to actually train dogs to actually, um, it's not a game anymore. And how do you do that? Well, it's top secret. <laughs> and uh, I have people who know, so I know certain things, but um, that is not easy. And, uh, and, and it's a whole different sport. And that dog's engagement does come from sinking his teeth into 
<laughs> the enemy. So um, stick with the bite sleeves and the bite suits. It's, it's a much easier level of training. But anyway, that being said, uh, I'll probably have all these trainers come out of the woodwork and yell at me for saying that, but it's no big deal. I'm a pet dog trainer. I've competed in agility and obedience, competitive obedience, um, and just, uh, you know, for me, especially with uh, cancer detection. So another thing I've done is uh, trained cancer sniffing dogs. Well, you're not going to discipline your dog into doing a trick or a scent detection. You know, you're not going to, you, you can't. Uh, be strict with a dog who's learning that type of thing. You have to be engaged with that dog. So at all, my point is, uh, and yes, I've trained cancer sniffing dogs and was published in two medical journals, but they only do that because of the level of engagement. We train them that finding that scent, that cancer scent is valuable. And why is it valuable? It leads to access to engagement. And how do they get access to engagement? By finding the sample, right? But if it was always a predictable food reward, gets a little boring. And then when your dog's not hungry, it's a little boring. If you create play drive, it's always there. You can always have, I call them pocket tugs. Your tug can get small and you keep them in your pocket and you can always whip it out. So I hope you learned something. Proper engagement. Then you have a proper bond. Like I said, people with totally untrained dogs and no engagement you're going to be bonded to your dog because you love your dog and you feed it and you sleep with it and you pet it. And so there are lots of little things in a small way. It's a level of engagement, but it's not the level of engagement I'm talking about. I'm talking about the primary need for a dog to chase and bite. If you can add that into your dog's reward box, okay, then you're going to have a lot more power through that engagement to have perfect obedience. It's kind of the secret that all dog trainers know, but all and all competitive dog sports people know, but pet dog owners don't know. They just see red. I want my dog to sit. I want my dog to this. And we start talking to him like a person and we're very boring. And those dogs never listen. I'd rather have the jumping, barking dog that I can say, plots, down, leave it. <laughs> okay, they stopped. They stopped jumping. They stopped barking. And now they're lying down. And then when I release him, he can go be a dog again. That's why I believe that all service dogs should be allowed to play. I don't think anybody, much less a dog, can be working 24-7. You know, I mean, I understand maybe breaking a little bit of the, um, and I actually don't. I mean, I, the more I live and the longer I live, when a dog is working, he has to know he's working. So when that vest is on and when we're out, it's 100% we're working. When the blind dude gets home, I hope he's playing fetch with his dog. I mean, I think it would make a better service dog. And I'm probably going to have a lot of people argue with that too. But I've trained service dogs. Um, and a lot of people I know who are disabled. Um, in fact, I've worked with a couple of blind clients. They all play with their dogs. And the, the, the more they're clear about now we're playing, now we're not, the better the, the dog will work for you. But if he can never play, then he's very likely to sneak off after the distraction, for sure. So that's all for today. Doggy, my dog is so tired. We have had three dogs um, boarding here, and one of them is her childhood playmate uh, that came here when he was very young. So he kind of learned the ropes from her, and he's back, and they're very in love. So I have a tired border collie. Therefore, I'm going to be talking a lot. Okay, so proper play, proper engagement. Think about it here. And in the next couple videos, I'm going to be showing you the two toy tug game, how to move away. It may already be on the channel. Um, so scroll in the 101 mistakes. If it is not there, I'm going to be posting the two toy tug game. Okay, happy training.